that's for the science for today. And now let's uh, start. So... Let me check something real quick. Uh, I don't know. I tried to do a normal run and I think everything was going quite nice. And I don't want to. Ah, that was too late. If you press... Okay, first, first lesson. <laughs> first lesson of the game. If you press the start button uh, at the beginning of the cutscene, you can skip the cutscene completely. But if you are too late, you can't. But somehow it worked. So we only had to watch one one picture and two text frames. And so we are at the beginning of the game. Also remember to stay hydrated. And right now I would like to... no. Okay, it was Alsia. It was Alsia who said that... Um, at the beginning, starting to collect hands and stuff. I... Um, yeah, first hen you have to collect is this one. After that you go directly down and you do not get hit by the guards if you stay very close to the wall. Like touch the wall slightly and go downwards. It's not a big deal. So you cannot get touched because um, as you can see as long as enemies move in a certain direction they continue to move and they do not stop to... Well, they, they do not change direction until they touch a wall. And when they touch a wall it's kind of random which direction they will face next. Sometimes they turn around, sometimes they face left or right. And so now we have two hands and we go directly into this cave. Also, screen transitions and teleports are very well programmed in this game, as I said. <laughs> Which means you have to be careful not to touch a guard when you go out, but sometimes you cannot do anything about that. So. Because I screwed up totally because I was walking around, the guards are now in a completely different position than they would be in a normal run, but it's not a big deal, we can deal with that. So after that, after you collected the hand at the pond, you go directly upwards and straight, no, not straight, but diagonally to this side, and then you go over here, down here, into the cave. If you manage to touch a corner in a correct way, you get a wall clip or corner clip, as I would call them. Sometimes it works. This was a corner clip. If you touch a wall, uh, you get some. Sometimes you get a little boost in the direction you are facing. It's not really necessary to do that in a run because it saves. I don't know. A couple of frames over the course of the run or something like that, so it's not worth it to try it because you can get stuck um, and lose a couple of frames. So it's not really that worth, but it's a nice little thing to know. So yeah, now we have collected all the five hands, which is our first task, and you will at a certain in a certain in a certain step or in a certain stage when you are learning this game and have <clears throat> when you have done a couple of runs you will learn that it's actually quite a thing to remember because there's a question later in the game or there can be a question and they ask you what was the first task you had to do and you have to answer you had to collect hens so keep that in mind and not do not forget. Also, the sword needs to be equipped right away. And do not equip the save icon, just press to the right. And the sword is always positioned at the second slot or in the second slot. First slot is the save icon, you get the save icon from the first man you have to speak to before you can cross the bridge 
the very start of the game. So we have a lot of slots, as you can see, but because we do a 100% run, you might you might think that we will fill all the slots. That's not the case. However, only the upper three rows are filled with um, uh, items. The last row is just I don't know. It's just there for fun. Maybe they have planned to include um, four additional items into the game, but maybe they didn't finish it or something like that. I don't know. Also, if you do runs and if you are used to the late game or the end game, you have the urge to run. And we will come. We will come to this later. What running means? It's actually the dart attack, it's called the dart attack, and you can execute it. Yeah, like some better stuff. That, that could be that could be the answer. And now we have to kill all the enemies, so we go over here first. I do not know if this is really the optimal best solution that you can have, but to me it seems like that. So off to our first secret. That's the first harbor fool that you can find. You have to slice down the tree and uh, cut down the tree, and then you can get the harbor fill, the very first harbor fill in the game. And then you, we are back here, and we go this path downwards, killing uh, killing soldiers on the way, uh, especially this one. Now we have a sword. Now we can deal with them, and we have to trigger that switch and then the first gem will appear and we have to collect that. Also I am pretty much into the 100% category right now because I prepared this for the submission so so badly and so desperately. <laughs> and if you want to know something about the any percent run I think I will do a second stream for that. This time I want to cover the 100% category because it's really everything that is in the game. Especially, no not especially, except some items that we will not collect because they are not required for 100% but we will come to that later as always. So um, I'm really bad at fighting right now, I do not know why. Also, you do not have to collect these coins. And after we killed all the soldiers over here, we can teleport back because walking is a little bit slower. Despite the screen transitions being very slow and very stupid animated, stupidly animated, I am not going to skip the screen transition uh, by walking over there because it's really it's really faster to use the teleporter. Uh, no, it's not that. There should be another one somewhere here. No, maybe not. So if you um, think that you uh, killed all the soldiers, you can talk to the swordmaster. And if the first thing, no, uh, if the first word in this text box is now then you are good to go. If not, you have done something wrong. You must save the town. Okay, we are not done yet. If his last text box is good luck, then you also finished. Maybe there's someone over here. And that's uh, that's the, the reason why I was telling you that because I was screwing up so, so bad by walking around with no apparent no apparent reason, except explaining stuff. Yeah, the cycle of the guards, the movement cycles are a little bit off and I have to search for them. Oh, okay, here it is. Also, if you are not close to the enemy, the enemies will not move. So if you are too far away from enemies, they will not move on the map. So it's no global timer that moves. So now, as you could see, the first word was now and the last text box was good luck. I can talk to him again, just for reference. The first word is now and the last text box is 
There it is. There it is. Good luck. And if he says good luck, then you're good to go. And also not walking uh, to the right because teleporter is faster, a little bit faster. We just teleporting back. Um, and now we can go to the mansion. As a kid, back when I was uh, playing the game for the first time, I was always uh, I thought that this is Camelot. I don't know why, because I didn't see the movie. I was uh, seeing no, I was not seeing the movie first. I was um, playing the game before watching the movie for some reason. So first, this is our mansion. We have to get to Ruber because he's some hiding somewhere in the mansion. It's our mansion, actually. And before we do that, we kill four of them, four soldiers in the courtyard. And then we go in. And now there is... Yeah, the movie is great. The movie is really great. You cannot say anything bad about the movie, I think. The movie is really great. And it's not a Disney movie, in my opinion. It's a Warner Bros. licensed movie, and it's not a Disney movie. But it feels kind of that way. But it's a great movie. I really like it. So now we have to kill all the ghosts. I call them ghosts. I think they are called wizards or something, but to me they appear as ghosts, so I call them ghosts. And you have to hit this hidden switch. When you start running this game, you have to remember, you have to memorize the layout of the map. Because, well, yeah, you have to. And you have to know where everything is. In 100% you have to kill all the ghosts, in any percent we do not have to do that. And in any percent we skip all the ghosts, we do not kill a single one of them. Because they are scary as hell. As you might see in a couple of seconds. Because I have to kill a lot more of them. But first, before we do that, we have to collect or we have to we have to get this dog to follow us. And it's not a pig, it's a dog. It should be. Or you are told that this is a dog. And you have to bring this dog to his or her owner. I don't know. I think it's it's an it's just a dog. And because the owner is very thankful, he gives you his shield. And the shield is not used in the run, but you have to collect it. So the shield can block enemy attacks, also the attacks of these stupid ghosts. Also, pro tip, do not try to not get into the corner with, or with your back to the wall when you are fighting a ghost. And this is the attack the ghosts used to do. And when you are too close to them, before you attack, they will start their attack. And if you are too far away, you will swing your sword. And your sword has a couple of frames. It's just a couple of frames, but it has a certain cooldown. And before you can swing your sword again, the ghost will do his attack and you will yeah, get hit. Well, which is not good. You do not want to get hit too often. But also the 100% run is a lot fa a lot faster, no, it's not faster but it's a lot easier than any percent because you get a lot of hearts, you get all the hearts in the game, which is 12 in total, because you have to collect all the heart containers, and yeah. Also this might not be the best route to get rid of all the ghosts, or it might not be the fastest way to get rid of all the ghosts. But to me, it seems reasonable to do it this way. I do not know if there is any faster, any faster way to do this. I'm just doing it this way. It seems to be the fastest way. It's also the most reasonable way, I think, because you have. You not only have, do you have to kill all the ghosts, you also have to collect items, which is um, this one is one of those items you have to collect. It's the grappling hook. 
and with the grappling hook. The grappling hook is used two times in the run or in the whole game, and you have to you have to collect it. Do not question why, because it's one hundred percent, of course. And that was very that, that was very close. I think it was the last possible pixel that. Also, I do not know if they. If, 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 if your distance to the ghost does trigger the attack all the time, or if it's just random, some kind of randomness into the attack pattern of the ghosts, I don't really know. Sometimes they troll you and sometimes they are very nice. I think I killed all of them, hopefully. Now we have to go back to this place. Because there is a secret door, which is not, well, not secret, but it's closed. Until you've finished off all the ghosts, and then you can go into this secret area. Which leads you to the compass, which will not, we will not use the compass in the, in the run, but it's a very useful item. And the first heart container, by the way. Now we have six hearts. And you start with five hearts, as you can see. Uh, the compass is a very useful item when you are playing this game casually because it shows the location of every enemy and every item on the map and it also shows a very very detailed um, well map it shows a map and you can you can check where are hidden paths and stuff so now we are outside yay six hearts and six hearts full we are full of health, packed with HP, and now we can kill ghosts. Uh, no, no ghosts. We do not kill any more ghosts in this run. Hopefully, maybe in the end game. But for now, we are just. I forgot to equip the grappling hook right away. But it's not a big deal. You have to do it anyway, so you can also do it now. Then you have to go to this area here, which is the roof top of. The mansion. Now we reach sort of level two, and because there is, uh, an, yeah. If you are wondering why we are killing so many soldiers, and why we are killing all the soldiers in this area, we are actually not supposed to do that, or it's not necessary to do that. But we have to do this to reach a certain sort of level at the. At a certain spot or a certain, in a certain part of the game. And this is a lot harder to explain than everything else, so let me let me think about that. I have to explain and I have to count, and everyone who knows me knows that counting is really bad. So my counting is really bad. I cannot focus on a couple of things at the same time, so let me let me try and get this, uh, get this, get this very, okay, yeah, um, I don't know, I was just, I was just uh, noticing that I was dropping frames and I was distracted a little bit, so that happens. We have to go out of the mansion to kill more soldiers and we have to do this a second, a third and a fourth time, so we have to do four times. Killing all the soldiers, which is required to <laughs> Thanks. So maybe you can maybe you can uh, help me and keep track on how many times I killed all the soldiers. So this is the second time, I'm pretty sure about that. And we have to do it four times, so it should not be that hard. Also, the reason for that, yeah, I wanted to explain why we are doing this. So the reason is, each enemy or each distinct enemy in the game gives you a certain amount of XP. And just to show you what I'm talking about, if you press start you get to the item screen and if you press select on the item screen you get this uh, statistics stuff, which shows you the time, the in-game time that you are currently playing the game, so the in-game time works a little bit. <laughs> yeah, uh, I also, yeah. 
I think so. I think so. I think so. I think we can. I think we can do. We can handle that. We can handle to. Yeah, we can count to four. I think. We should. We should be good to go. Um. Uh, yeah, the in-game timer works a little bit weird, or it's a little bit, a little bit strange in this game. So how it works is, if you die, you are game over, and you start. You can't. Or you are brought back to the title screen and you can load the game or start a new game. If you load the game, the timer continues. If you die, the timer stops, of course. I think it, the timer also stops between screen transitions and timer also stops in cutscenes, I think. So if you are doing an any percent run without without seeing any cutscenes, without dying, and without further delay, you get your real time, your measured real time will be a little bit higher than the in-game time. Every time. It's always the case. I do not know why this is the case, but that's how it works. So we don't do not use the in-game timer Apparently, we do not. I actually, I didn't think about that because in-game timer just sucks. I don't know. I don't need the in-game timer because I have life splits, so it's not a big deal. The next um, number is more important. It's your current experience, and then comes, well, experience to next level as always. And it's nice that they show you how many experience points you need. It made a rooting, experience rooting and distribution a little bit easier. So I thought, how can you get to a certain amount of XP and a certain amount of time in the most, well, in the smallest amount of time? So, yeah, in-game timer seems inaccurate, and that's true. It's pretty much true. And, yeah. It turns out that certain enemies gives you a certain amount of XP in this game, as I, always, as I already said. And it also turns out that, yeah, it's nice that the game tells you. And we will check the screen a little bit more in the end, or in the later game just for reference. So we have to kill certain enemies because they are in our way, we cannot avoid them, which is the ghosts, we have to kill ghosts, but ghosts only give you one experience point, which is not very worth it. So we do not kill them a couple of times, we only kill them once to get the, all the items and then we are good to go. Um, then there are other enemies like spiders, they give you three experience points, there are bats, they give you two experience points, I think. There are mice, they give you one or two, I do not, I'm not exactly sure about that. And I do not really care about that. But most importantly, there are soldiers, as we already killed a couple of times. And soldiers give you four experience points, which which is the highest amount of experience that you can get per enemy. So that's the reason why we are killing so many soldiers. And the reason why we need these experience points, uh, I think I will come to that later. So this is uh, another screen and you have to cycle through all the screens. You cannot just go back to the game. You have to cycle through all the game, uh, screens and then you can press the start button to close the menu. This is the parchment screen. It shows how many parchments you got. And the game con consists of eight worlds in total. And in 100% we have to collect all the secrets. And if you collect all the secrets in one area or in, in one world, you get one parchment. So you can get eight parchments. And if you get all the parchments, you get a secret ending. So best ending. So 100% is actually best ending. Now we are back at the item screen and we can close the menu and we can continue fighting soldiers 
and they trolled me really bad, so... But it's not a big deal, we have just... we have to kill them. And this is the third time, hopefully I'm right. Hey Josh, nice to see you! Thanks! <laughs> Thanks a lot! Thanks a lot! Yes, I am so... so... relieved. I am so... So, I'm actually excited, but I cannot show my excitement because it's just, I don't know. I was so, so happy about that, that I finally got a room. And it was, it was not a bad room, it was a really good room, in my opinion. Because everything worked out pretty well, I think, I would say. So all the fights and all the stuff that I had to do. Yeah. Nice to see you, and welcome to teaching 100%. So I'm talking about all the stuff that I'm always explaining to you in every single stream. So yeah, you are, maybe you get bored, but I want to show off some of the strategies and I'm... The horrid AI. Yes, yes, uh, Bladebeak uh, was a troll, he was a little bit of a jerk because he, yeah, he took a little bit, it took a little bit of time to make him, to force him to break the wall, but I took him all the way um, to the left and down the castle wall and then back to the right into the bottom right corner to collect the gem. That was totally... It's totally stupid that you have to do that because you cannot talk... You cannot take him just downwards and... Because he's just not breaking the walls for you. That's a little bit stupid. So now we are uh, back. We killed all the soldiers four times. I hope so. But I'm actually kind of sure about that. And now we can get into this uh, entrance. Oh, I messed up, so I'm actually not trying to kill this spider. I do not want that. I'm trying to kill... I am, I'm killing this spider. This is a spider that is trying to attack you, so just kill it. And you have to go all the way to this room, because you have to collect another harbor fill. So this world has two harbor fills. Which is an exception. All the other worlds have one harder fill except world 8. There's no harder fill at all, I think. And now you can go to this room where you have to face your first boss. I do not know yet. The submission phase uh, for Set of M this year ends. Let me check. It ends tomorrow. Uh, I think at 0 o'clock. So it's actually Sunday. The very beginning of Sunday. So, yeah. As soon as. Also, try to stunlock this boss. It's really easy to stunlock him. You have to adjust the re to the recoil. You have to press to the right uh, slightly. Not too much because you do not want to get too close to him. But also, you do not want to have. Uh, you, not, you do not want to be too far away from him. That's the correct sentence. And the music died. And yeah, I do not know yet. They end the submission phase tomorrow and then they will decide. And yeah, the music really died. So now we get a parchment because we collected or we got all the secrets. And as soon as you get a parchment, you can press the A or B button, then your hearts got filled up, and as soon as the screen turns white, I usually split, if I'm not forgetting it. So, now we could save, but I do not want to overwrite my corrupt save file, <laughs> because I want to do a little bit of research. Yeah, poor, poor music rip. I think it's my computer, it's not the game. I don't know. Oh! I got hit by a snake, because I didn't pay attention. 
Also, now we are in world 2. It's the forest. And the forest introduces snakes. Oh, yeah, snakes. I think they give you, yeah, they give you two experience points. You had an idea for an incentive. Okay. I think I I already uh I already wrote a little bit about incentives. <laughs> Name the character Daps. <laughs> That's quite a nice idea, but you cannot name your character in this game. That's very poor, it, but it would be very entertaining. That's true, but well, for this I, I would, I would need to, I would need to practice the dab a little bit. Also, because soldiers give four experience points, we are killing more of them, even more. More and more soldiers. Always, soldiers are always a good thing to kill in this game, apparently. So we are killing a couple of soldiers that are not directly on our way, but we need the experience points for later. Also, this guy needs to die. And no, the first, the first thing that we do is we buy a shovel from this guy here. He talks a little bit, you can just mash away the text boxes, then you have to wait. Because another text box will appear and you have to say yes. So you have to press the A button to get the shovel. Also the shovel is an item that you have to equip right away because it's just worth it. Um, I always have to take a look on my controller to not press a wrong button because it's a, it's not a GameCube controller, it's a third party one that has a better d-pad but the start button is a little bit yeah it's placed a little bit it's a little bit strange to press the start button and not press anything else okay I have uh, I made a mistake uh, before you go over there you have to go into this house and You have to talk to Garrett. Garrett, that's the guy that we already talked to at the bridge. And now he still doesn't really want to help us. He's not really helpful. He's not really useful. So we go outside and we go back in. That's a thing that we always do when we want someone to help us. We go out and we come back in. And now he talks a little bit about his past and that his father was a friend of our father or he was a friend of our father I'm not quite sure I cannot remember correctly I never read through the text now we are out again <laughs> he looks like our character's twin really you're sure about that let me check it's also the last time that you see Garrett I think oh yeah that's right. His clothes are of the same color, but he has uh, he has a stick or a rod or something, and we have a sword. Ah. And he's blind, by the way. Oh, you 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 yeah. You watch the movie, you know that he's blind. And now we kill more soldiers because we need XP, and I think I do not need to kill this one over there. But I kill this one. And because you have the shovel equipped, you can dig for hearts and other stuff, which is nice in this area because when you are hurt, you can just replenish your health very quickly. Yeah, that's right. I remember you uh, talked about that. You said that you watched the movie. It's a great movie. I'm still. I'm still thinking that this is a great movie. It really is. It's a great animated movie. Yes. I think I watched it with my kids, but I'm not quite sure. I asked my kids about, because they have seen me running this game, and they, they asked me, what is this what is this game about? And I told them that there's a movie, and I think we saw the movie together, and they said, no, 
you do not know the movie. Also, you have to avoid this spider sometimes. The spider does not turn around and goes left or right and it comes very close to you. And you have to you have to hit the box at this position and then you have to go over here to the bone and then you have to swing your sword to get the stick and then you have to fall into the pit to be uh, back at the entrance and able to get out real quick without having to backtrack all through through all the cave and yeah 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 i think the song's pretty good and the the singers also the voices were quite nice and all that stuff yeah if they do not remember the movie they have to watch it again i'm pretty sure they have seen it before but who cares we can just watch it hmm, maybe we can yeah i should do that i should watch the movie together with my with my boys and after we killed all these soldiers right now we have to go into this cave which leads to a village for reasons and in this village we also have to kill all the soldiers as we had to do in the first map you are right melon slice you are right is it actually called melon slice or is it melon slice c because of the double e i'm not sure i'm just asking no offense yeah watch it again currently we are watching monster rancher again if you know this that was a pretty good pretty good series in my opinion yeah talking about actually there's not quite there's not there's not anything to explain in this area <laughs> you have to kill all the soldiers but um, I am not quite sure anymore if killing all the soldiers is ah okay it's just a double E because of you had to you had to write it it's also the reason for my underscore I am enjoying, I am enjoying Monster Ranger pretty much yes it's so worth it it's quite nice to watch it and it's it has such a, such a high nice flow of emotions in it and stuff and it's really it's really emotional and all that stuff it's kind of a little bit yeah it it feels a little bit old to watch it because the dialogue and the animation is sometimes a little bit old but we are watching it in german and maybe it's just a german translation or it's just a german synchronization that is a little bit weird sometimes but i'm still enjoying it so it's quite a nice series also after we killed all the soldiers we have to dig at the second well not this grass spot but this one here this one this should be the right patch to dig out the large turtle which it is yes i was right <laughs> quite a success for me now <laughs> I wasn't sure if I remembered correctly, but yeah, it's not the it's not the upper right one, or it's no it's not the top right one, and it's not the one below. It's over there. It has not aged well. Yes. Yeah. Your job, thank you. <laughs> I'm proud of myself. No, I'm not. Not really. But yeah, that's the spot. And uh, I think I did. Um, I I posted a little bit. Uh, no, a little bit. A little screenshot in the any percent guide. If you have read the any percent guide, you will notice that there was a a screenshot of this particular place where you have to dig out the large turnip because 
it's hard to find but when you do not know it but it's easy to remember when once you got it so it's this particular spot and yeah now we're good to go um if i ever use you mean like well is it an let me is it an l or a t it looks like an l so it's like i know i know slack i have no i never used it before i've never used it before but i know what it is it's some kind of team collaboration communication software i don't know but no i'm not using slack but i'm willing to try it out if i have a reason for that so why not why not give it a try I am willing to do that. Uh, now we are heading back to the forest entrance because there is someone that we have to take on our side. But before we do that, we kill more soldiers, but not all of them because it's not necessary to kill every single one of them. Hopefully. <laughs> and... I think yeah we already reached sword level 3 so we are good to go sword level 3 is the first milestone that you have to that you have to reach for getting all the items and also any percent it was exactly like this court okay no then I would just stick to Discord. That would be preferable. <laughs> so, okay, I skipped talking about the heart container. This is the next heart container that you find. As soon as you... It's very easy to find, actually, if you watch the environment closely. And after you... Yeah. You have to find a heart because you want to be at full health when you reach the next area. Now you have to go all the way down to this particular room, I would call it. And there's the horse. The horse is a funny thing because every time you dig around, you notice that there are hearts, but also some little turnips as well, like this one. Every time you collect one of these little turnips, the horse will carry you for about 10 seconds or something like that. After that, you will be thrown off the horse and you have to dig for another turnip. You cannot stack them, so once you collected one of them, it counts as one. And if you collect more than one, it's just one. So you can ride the horse for at most 10 seconds and nothing more and then you will be thrown off but because we have the large turnip the horse is actually willing to carry us um, for an unlimited amount of time so the horse just says thank you it's a speaking horse so do not worry and now we have to go all the way back to merlin with the horse which is also a funny, a funny thing, because when you are on the horseback, you cannot fight. You cannot use your sword, you cannot use the shovel, you cannot do anything. And on top of that, you cannot get off the horse by yourself. The only way to get off the horse is with a small turnip and when the, t uh, the time is running out. There's no other way. So we cannot kill any more soldiers, we have to avoid them. All of them. And if you, as you can see, the horse has a very large hitbox. If you get hit, you just lose a heart and nothing else happens. So you cannot really defend yourself. You can not, you can absolutely not defend yourself, which is a problem. But you just have to wait for them to go away and then you are at 
Merlin's place and you have to talk to Merlin. You cannot do this before you get on the you know, before you get the horse because you when you do that you have to talk to him again. Talking to him opens up this path and when you come back to this area with the horse you have to do it again. So after you have the horse you can ride across this bridge. There's a heavy wind and when you stop moving you will be carried back by the wind. I think they say it's a wind barrier or something. I'm not sure. So with the horse we can cross the bridge and we can um, proceed to the next area which is a dragon's land or something. Or it's a swamp or something. I don't know. And here we have the nice cute little dragons that are actually pretty terrifying enemies because as you will see as soon as we try to kill them because they are in our way they start to spit fire on us and when they start to spit fire it's hard to avoid getting hit by the fire so this turns out to be pretty pretty good here we have to collect a hard film also one note about hard fills you can also not stack hard refills, so as soon as you get one, you cannot get another. You can only have one hard refill at a time in your inventory. I do not have to kill this one, but I don't know, I want a heart. No, okay. After you get the heart container, you can go over here. Hopefully he will just go away. No, he doesn't. But now I have the slingshot. The slingshot is very helpful. You can equip it and you can shoot projectiles at your enemies, but it's also kind of slow to equip it. So I just skip it and I just go back to this spot and then I have to go over here. And I think uh, that was right here. Yeah. I'm always terrified that I'm not finding the right way through the maze because I'm also not very good at mazes. Oh, you cannot go. It's the same trick as in the first area. You can just avoid getting hit by touching the walls. Can you go away? No. And you cannot, okay, you cannot just slip through below the dragon. There's not enough space. <sighs> That's just Quest for Camelot not handling hitboxes very well. So now we have plants. First plant you have to do a damage boost. No, it doesn't hit. Okay, that's pure luck. And doing that you get a very good cycle because when the plants are moving you cannot, normally you cannot uh, get across them. You cannot get past them without getting hit. But if you do this with the first plant, sometimes they, the plant hits you and it's just it's just one heart, it's not too bad. But you get a little, little damage boost and then you are at a good cycle with the other two. So the other, the other two stop moving and you can just walk past them, which is very nice. So before the fight starts, I used to equip the stick. The stick is used to fight this enemy. And I could do a save file here because I want to try something. I wanted to try something out. Uh, 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 uh. Let's overwrite the save file. Why not? It's practice. I, for some reason, I don't know why, I watched a playthrough on YouTube by username Gash86 and he did a little playthrough for this game and he had a very interesting strategy for killing the plant so let's try that let's try out the strategy that i just saw i think it was today actually so he was doing that he was taking this position and now the plant goes goes insane and you have to no, it's not really worth it, I think.
Sometimes you... <laughs> it's a pixel perfect trick to place the stick inside a mouth of the plant. It's really... It's really stupid. No, it's not worth it, I think. You can die very easily, okay. <sighs> no, it's not really... It's not really worth it because the plant is not... Also, I can react... I can reactivate the music, by the way. Let me try that. Oh, come on. Nope, doesn't come back. Plant looks like it's dancing, yes, that's right. That's absolutely right. And the music doesn't reappear. Come on. Ah, I forgot. <coughs> Sorry. I forgot to do something. I have to select this. No, doesn't work. One more try. One more try. Uh. There it is. Music back. Music is back. And yeah, I need something to drink very quick. Sorry about that. Mm. Okay, that was a um, that was a nice try. The problem with the strategy is it's too hard to place the stick into the plant's mouth. But maybe no. Ah, no, no. Okay, no. I'm. Sorry. <clears throat> no, I think there's no other solution to that. There's only one way to kill the plant, but before we do that, we have to equip the stick. Music hype! <laughs> so the plant will start to do this, and the music stops again. Okay, never mind. I tried. So it's easier to place the stick in the plant's mouth this way from the side and it's a little bit easier and the stick lasts longer so you can kill the plant in three cycles normally that's the best way to deal with the plant and we should be getting a parchment yes <coughs> God. ah my throat feels bad <laughs> you jinxed it. <laughs> I don't think so. It's just, it's just terrible potato hardware and a terrible game. So I do not want to save. And let's bring back the music one once more, because I like music. Also, if you're running this game, you should get used to the music. <coughs> I'm so sorry, I do not know what, what just happened. My throat is kind of killing me right now. Okay, never mind. Just continue. First thing we have to do in this uh, dragon area is we have to collect the dragon scale, which is located here. Again, we have to cut down a tree with our sword. I cannot talk anymore. That's too bad. It really hurts. Oh my god. <laughs> no, it doesn't hurt. It tickles. It tickles like hell. <laughs> that feels strange. Okay, I'm sorry. <clears throat> After the last stream's success, 
This stream is a crappy stream again. <laughs> the music dies. <laughs> the music is dying again. So after we collected two, no, one, one egg, just one. Yeah, I'm actually I'm okay, but I do not know what happened. <coughs> Maybe there was a little fly. <laughs> no, I'm I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't know. So now that we have collected the dragon scale, we can jump and. This is the, hmm, I think most terrible part. No, it's not the most terrible part in the game, but it's place, it's second place or third place or something like that. So as soon as you, every time you see jumping, someone jumping in this game, I think it looks pretty, pretty easy. But if you do it yourself, you will notice that it's almost pixel perfect. No, not really, but yeah, it's kind of strange. If you are, if you want to jump on this, stone right here let's say you want to hit the stone and you think that this might be okay because when you imagine you jump to the left you touch the stone at the uh, at an area where there are stone pixels that's not quite true because the outer layer of the stone is actually water because when you touch it you drown immediately and the animation looks like Kaylee is drowning uh, on top of the stone so it's not really making sense but that's how the game works you have to make sure to be positioned a little bit above the bottom of the bottom pixels of the stone I think this should be okay yes it was now you have to adjust again for the next jump and after this you have to uh, adjust again so sometimes you have to adjust after every single jump sometimes you can uh, get some a couple of jumps in a row but sometimes you have to adjust and you have to be very careful so jumping upwards or downwards is a little bit easier especially upwards but you have to make sure to hit well just aim for the middle or center of the stones that's the best way to do it and try to keep track of the moving stones because they uh, there's a slight amount of time where they are, do not move and <clears throat> yeah platforming in this game is really not working well it's really scary and crappy and yeah it goes wrong uh, very often so First we have to hit this little island in the middle and this is our friend the Swordmaster again and he has a task for us. He wants to teach us the next attack which is the dot attack and as I mentioned at the beginning of the game this is the attack that you need to have in order to be able to run in this game which makes the run a little bit faster because you are moving faster, a lot faster actually. So running is good and we want running so we need to learn this attack but there is a little downside to that. <clears throat> we need to have sword level 3 in order to learn this attack so that's the reason why also in any percent we are killing a lot of soldiers to reach sword level 3 early in the game when there are soldiers. Because later in the game there are not as many soldiers as in the beginning of the game. That's why we are killing a lot of those soldiers in the mansion. So, <clears throat> yeah, to reach sword level 3, this place. Excuse me. Okay. And uh, in 100%, there is another reason for experience farming later in the game. We will come to that. You already, actually, you already know the reason because it's this little glitch that. There was a little video about that. I made a little video about that glitch and the, as you saw at the beginning of the stream, the little, um, the little, yeah, corrupt save file. That was, that was the word I was searching for. So now, as you can see, the sword master is blocking our way to this egg. There's no way to get to this egg. And not only because running is faster, and running is a good thing, 
Also, we need to collect this egg also in any percent. That's the reason why we need sword level 3. Because as soon as you talk to him, oh, I actually jumped into him <laughs> right into the face, and he is impressed by our jumping skills, and now he's just gone. So the sprite is still there, but it's kind of in the background, and we can collect the egg. And when you exit this map and re enter it and go back to this island, the sprite of the Swordmaster will actually be gone. So he's really not here anymore but his presence still remains so i don't know why that's just poor implemented i think so this is the hardest part of the jumping section you have to follow this path all the way up and remember moving stones this is a moving stone just remember and then you have to go across these little buddies here then you have to jump back that was scary and go back here and this is the this is the part where you can um, get a couple of jumps in a row especially downwards now we have to go <coughs> yeah all the way to the right and to the screen transition because this is uh, the reason why we are collecting these eggs by the way <coughs> there's a huge plant and if you are wondering why we do not kill this plant because it actually looks the same as the plant that we already killed with the stick and that's also a thing that I uh, was doing back when I was playing this as a kid <coughs> I was trying to kill this plant with the stick as we have done with the other plant before but it doesn't work for some reason it doesn't work with this plant, so we have to find another way to kill this thing. But before we do that, we have to collect all the eggs, which is one of them is collected down there. It's located down there. Now we go back. Also, just for reference, there's only one way to get back. As you can, as you could see, um, there's. It doesn't matter where I enter the screen transition, I'm always teleported to this spot right at the top of this thing here, this path. If you try to get back, you have to go to this particular spot. There's no way to enter the screen transition anywhere else, for some reason, I don't know why. So we have to go there, then we can go all the way up and we have to enter this little cave here. <coughs> which I think is supposed to be a volcano or something. In this volcano we can make use of our dart attack, as you can see, this is the dart attack. You execute the dart attack by pressing the directional <coughs> d-pad in the same direction twice, so pressing, pressing right two times and then press the sword button. Then you execute a dart attack. There's another way. You can press the, uh, the, the D-pad twice in one direction, as I did now. And as soon as I do not stop moving, I can execute a dart attack all the time, whenever I want. So I can make use of that. I'm always referring to this as storing a dart attack. So when I say storing a dart attack, this is what I mean. So I am pressing the same direction twice, then I start moving and then I can uh, execute a dart attack whenever I want and when I'm in a good spot. So being in a good spot is also a very crucial thing about the dart attack because when you are running into an enemy that is not on the same axis as you, like now, okay, that was really, that was a stupid example, I'm sorry. Um, I can find another one, I can find a better one, like, no, this was, no, it doesn't work, <laughs> playing, playing bad doesn't work, okay, playing badly doesn't work, now, okay, no, that is not, that was not what I, okay, this is good, yeah, as you could see, I was actually hitting the guy with my hitbox, but instead of killing him, he was killing, he was hitting me, so, that's not what we want. We have to 
be very careful about our position towards the enemy so we have to be on the same axis same vertical and horizontal axis as the enemy also you cannot run into walls like you can in let's say for example a link to the past because link can walk or it can run into walls and that was that was also a good example of not being properly aligned and link can run into diagonal walls and follow them Kaylee no there are no diagonal walls in the game so that's not an option and also if you touch a wall if you are a little bit too close to a wall when running Kaylee just stops and yeah you get stuck so now we killed all the guards which is important because experience as always and now we hand over the five dragon eggs. Also, we collected a gem, as you could see. And now we have collected all the secrets. No, not quite, but in this area, in this section. Now we handed over all the eggs, and we have to find a key now. First enemy could have the yeah, first try. Very nice key, first try. Um, it's random. Normally, it's random. So the sweet XP as yeah, that's right. Um it's totally random which enemy um actually has the key. So sometimes you kill one and get the XP, and sometimes you have to kill I think it's up to ten or something. I don't know, I think it's 10 in this cave, so the last one should have the key, <laughs> otherwise you are, you would be pretty much done for. <laughs> so, so with the dragon on our back we can exit the cave, Som somehow the exit was blocked for some reason. Now we are outside, do not spam, do not uh, directly, uh, do not um, instantly start mashing the A button because the A button has the dragon scale and you start to jump which is not quite preferred in this situation because the stone goes away if you are jumping and if you jump on the stone and as soon as the dialogue stops you can drown because the stone goes away so do not mash until you see the text box then turn right and jump to this screen this is the fastest way to get there apparently and walk a, a few steps to the right and then the dragon will just stomp over the plant and your way you can uh, yeah you can proceed the path is free you can proceed and this is a little secret here a little secret path which has a hard container and not a hard container for us that we are greatly appreciate and now we head to the next boss so across that bridge down there into the dragon's lair I'm sorry for the sniffing but I'm kind of getting sick or something I don't know so these dragons are cute but they are hard to kill because they need or it needs two dart attacks to kill them and each dart attack has to be executed correctly like i said positioning is very important and sometimes it can be really hard <clears throat> also because of the dart attacks execution i have to go back a couple of steps to have enough room to press the direction twice. This was a bad example again of yeah, it was a good example of bad positioning, let's put it that way. So uh, I'm sorry, I have to I have to take an action. Considering my nose. <laughs> sorry. I 
do not want to get sick. I need to drink. I need to drink some tea or something and eat honey. Honey is really good when you are getting a cold or something. When your throat hurts and your nose. Yeah. Eat honey. Also, getting this heart refill because it's required for 100%. So there's only one more dragon on our way. Yeah, it sucks. Being sick sucks. Absolutely. And this boss is also a funny thing. It's the third funny thing in the game. <laughs> Horse is number one. And he starts to spit fire and... Uh, no, let me let me do something. Let me turn on the music again because it's important in this area. It's very important that you hear what I'm talking about. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Here we go. If I attack him, sometimes you hear this strange noise sound. If you hear that, I think he dodges the attack. As you can see, the HP meter doesn't go down. As soon as you hear this, you are not hitting him properly. But I do not know what you have to do to hit him in the correct way. I'm just slashing at him until he dies. Sometimes it's faster, sometimes not. Well, I do not really care about that. I do not really know what you have to do to cor correctly hit him and kill him properly. Well, so with that being said, we head over to, we head over to the next area. That's a useful tip. Yeah, thank you. I think so, because... Um, also, the strategy for the boss, for the dragon boss, is just staying slightly below, right below or left, below, left to him, to his hitbox, because he has a very large hitbox, and uh, slash at him. Do not use the dart attack at him. It's hard to hit with the dart attack. It's, it's hard to, to get a couple of hard uh, dart attacks in, so, in a row. So now we are uh, back in a little maze. Then I'm terrible at mazes. But um, after doing a lot of runs in this game, I think I can memorize it now, finally. So use the dart attack as much as possible. Music rip, by the way. <laughs> I'm so sorry. This stream is, is wonderful again. It's, yeah. It's the same thing that happens all the time, except the last stream was... In the last stream everything worked, everything was fine, there was nothing... There was nothing terrible happening. I don't know why. So after... Uh, if you wonder why I am re-executing the dart attack for... After a certain amount of steps, Katie just stops using the dart attack. She just stops running, so you have to execute it again. And sometimes it takes a little bit of time to execute it again. And executing the dart attack is just practice. And my thumbs are kind of slow, so I'm pressing the D-pad with, with my uh, left thumb. And using that strategy is kind of low, so I might think about using another thing or something. <laughs> so that was uh, 112 seconds or time units left, which is quite good. Everything above 110 is good, in my opinion. Everything else is decent. <laughs> we cannot be bad at this one. So what we did is we cut down trees again with our sword, because our sword is... Um, blazing sharp and fast and we can cut down trees with our sword of course <clears throat> it's one of the best swords in the world it's not Excalibur by the way 
it's very close to, but it's not Excalibur. Um, with these, well, we cut down six trees. Sorry, six six trees, and using the wood of those six trees, he this carpenter, which actually every NPC in the game has the same sprite, which is a farmer sprite, but it's it was actually a carpenter if you didn't notice. So the carpenter used the wood of those six trees to make this thing. He could also build a house or something, but thanks for the follow, thanks for the follow, welcome. I do not have a name for our community, hmm, let me think about that. I was thinking about something with round table or something, because Quest for Camelot, you know? I don't know. Welcome to the community that has no name yet. Thank you for following. And yeah, he was actually not building a house or something. He could have done that, but no, he built a sled. And with the sled, we can go down the hill. And on this hill, we have to collect another hard refill. And this is different from any percent. In any percent, the sleigh ride is way easier because you have to be very careful and you have to follow the footsteps kind of you have to go this way and there is a hard refill thanks for following melon slice thanks thanks a lot welcome to the community that has no name yet <laughs> i will think about that i will come up with a name soonish oh i was hurt by a mouse M mice are very bad in this game one of the most terrible enemies. <laughs> the street ride. Oh yeah. That's right. Mm. Next thing you have to do. We have to collect one hard container in this area. But it's not hidden anywhere. We have to solve. We have to prove our wisdom and intelligence with uh, yeah, no, for this. Nay is German, uh, is German for no in my area, if you want it. Sometimes it slips through. So we have to <clears throat> prove our knowledge to Merlin. And how do we do that? We are getting a little quiz and this is the time where you can shine with your knowledge when you remembered everything from the game so far correctly and if you have seen the movie it's helpful so there's a dragon with two hands we talked to him for once and that's the only time that we talked to him by when we no actually twice we delivered the eggs and we delivered the key. And now we are asked what the name is. And there are a couple of questions. You have to answer five questions and you have to answer all of them correctly to get the hard containers. So in 100% it's absolutely crucial to answer each, uh, every single one of them, of those questions correctly apparently and in any percent it's not it's not required and i'm if i answer all the questions correctly i do not even grab the hard container because it just wastes time in any percent but in 100 percent we will do that we want to do that and there are five questions in total that you can get out of a pool of i think 24 or 25 questions i have would have to check uh, it's somewhere it's written somewhere in my notes I have also a text file on my computer somewhere with a translation in all the other languages I translated all the answers because it's really easy to spot out what the question actually aims for and to 
get the correct answer. Also, the answers are always in the correct or uh, the same order. They are not shuffled in any way, so it's pretty easy to get this right. So the first question, the two-headed dragon is called Devil and Cornwall, of course. If you think about it, I know you fine. The more you take, the more you leave behind. It's also very nice, it's footsteps. The man with the shield lost something so dear. Do you remember? It was in the, it was in the mansion. There was a man who was a loser, who lost something. Who had lost something, and we brought it back to him, and he rewarded us with his shield. <coughs> That's why it's the man with the shield. I'm sorry. <coughs> Excuse me. It starts again. Hopefully not. Maybe I should eat some honey or something. Okay. And he lost, of course, he lost his dog and we brought it back. So our king was chosen by freeing a sword. Yeah, he pulled a sword out of a stone and the sword was actually called Excalibur. And last question. When you found all the secrets, that is a thing that we already did a couple of times. Three times, I think. We should have three parchments, of course. It's parchments. And yeah, we answered everything correctly and we are rewarded with a heart container, another one. And it's actually bad that we are low on hearts right now. Now we can enter this cave. Also there's no out of bounds action in this game. I didn't find anything. I tried very hard to find uh, out of bounds stuff, but I couldn't come up with anything. I also tried to enter this cave without the riddle, which is not possible. Well, I was... sorry. Okay, now we have to... It's also a little maze, a little cave that is... It has a lot of rooms and it's uh, easy to get lost in these rooms because there are screen transitions or teleporters involved and every time when there are teleporters it can get really confusing. Also bats. Bats are terrible enemies because they move in a specific pattern uh, until or except when they touch a wall. Then they start to fly around a little bit a little bit crazy and they change their pattern slightly. But normally they fly in circles and it's actually easy to get them with a dart attack, but you have to focus a lot to not make any mistakes by aiming with the dart attack at them. So now we have to go into the first cave to get this scroll, and in the second cave there is another scroll. Or oh, it's actually all it's actually called parchment, I think, also parchment <coughs> or something. There's one cave over here, but it's just a dead end, so we skip it completely. Do not go in there. Now we are in a large cave that has one path. Well, that was close. I almost got hit. There's one path over here, which takes us to a room, and there's Merlin. But we do not have to talk to him, not even once. We just have to collect all these parchments or scrolls. What you are supposed to do in this area is you have to... Normally you have to collect all these maps or scrolls or whatever. I do not actually have to kill all these bats, but... Let's just... Oh, I got stuck in the bat's hitbox. Now we have to kill this bat. Because sometimes when you enter this cave, the bat can just uh, fly directly in front of the entrance. And when you go back, when you come back here, when you get out of the screen transition, the bat will just hurt you. I'm always scared about that, so I'm killing it before. It's actually a new strat. I didn't do it in a run, so in the PB. So killing more bats. 
to get on through. Actually, I'm killing bats for a reason. I'm killing bats to get uh, my hearts back, to fill up my health, because I want to be a, at full health, ideally, to face the next boss. So, do not go in there, because first you have to go in there. We also collected a gem, and now we are about to collect the last scroll. What you are supposed to do, actually, you are, well, supposed to get all these scrolls. That was very bad. That was bad with a T. And you are supposed to bring these scrolls back to Merlin. So Merlin is there to read these scrolls and to give you to give you an advice or a hint how to solve this puzzle and again we have to turn on the volume uh, the the sound yeah it's not just the volume it's the sound in total there's no audio output whatsoever okay we just need a little bit of audio thank you because this is the puzzle and every time you step on the stone, it will make a sound. It make, will make a good sound or a bad sound. And this, this is the good sound. This little bird sound. And you have to do this puzzle exactly in this way to open up the entrance to the wizard's lair, which is the next boss. If you're wondering, do you have to collect these scrolls? Because we already know the answer or we already know the solution to the puzzle? The answer is yes, we have to collect them, I tested that. For some reason, collecting all the scrolls triggers the, the, the stone puzzle switches, whatever. So without having all three of the scrolls, you cannot open the path, so you have to collect them. This is actually not necessary to kill the bat, but for the hearts. I'm doing it for the hearts. Just to get a little heart. Thank you. Now I'm at full health, which is quite nice. And we have to face the terrible, terrible wizard. The wizard is a terrible boss. Before we do that, we have to talk to Gilly the Goldfish. And this is the wizard. Or it's a magician. Evil magician. It's, it's, it's a magician. Okay. Um, if you try to stun lock an enemy, as you can notice, I was uh, I was stun locking him by just slashing at him without having to adjust for the recoil, and he died. So that was a very good fight. A little bit slow, but quite nice to have survived. Um, the wizard or the magician is kind of uh, actually also a funny thing because it actually it actually applies to all bosses to all the upcoming bosses because when you have the dot attack you can do something very useful to your enemies to you to ex especially to bosses when you um, slash at a boss also music rip by the way stupid game um no it's not the game it's my computer for some reason um yeah when you slash at an enemy or at a boss you will have a little bit of recoil as you could see but when you run into an enemy and into a boss with a dot attack also we have to equip the shovel uh, let me explain. Uh, when you hit a boss with a dart attack and start to slash at him immediately afterwards, you will can't stun lock him without having to adjust for the recoil. There's no recoil. So that's a nice little glitch or nice little exploit that you can do to make boss fights a little bit easier, but also a little bit more boring because when you can stun lock an enemy or a boss, Without recoil, you actually have to, well, just mash the B button or the sword button. You can also, you can also equip your sword on the A button, by the way. 
if you prefer that, but I prefer the B button because also when I played Link's Awakening, I always used the B button for sword, so it's just a personal thing. It doesn't matter to the run. Also, what I'm doing right now is I'm equipping the shovel because you need a shovel in this area. Also, you can dig around for stuff like hearts. Actually, only hearts. There's nothing else that you can dig out here. And what you are supposed to do in this area is you have to find Garrett and he gives you a, a map. I think it's called map. And this map contains a description of a path that leads to another map and you have to on this map again there is a description of a path to another one and so on and so on and so forth until you find the seventh one I think and this contains the path to this particular spot right here and this spot contains the magical flute as you can see dig it out and grab it right away also my any percent guide has again a screenshot of this particular spot it's very easy to memorize because it's directly directly aside this grass this patch of grass so it's easy to find and it's in the same row as this one so above this tree and then just dig it out here and it's always in the same spot so you do not need to collect these maps and I already talked about this a little bit I was telling you that there are items that we do not collect for 100% and what I meant was actually these maps because they are not required so we do not need the maps to um, for our 100% collecting everything counter. Also do not run directly into the snake. I was just trying to be positioned properly but you cannot position yourself properly to run into the snake without getting hit because the snake is a little bit too far to the right. So try to avoid the snake. Oh my what am I doing? I actually I actually have to take the staircase. Snake is in the way, just kill it. Also you have to I think it's on the right side. Yeah, that's what's right. This snake is easy to kill because you have to run. Also, this is the first NPC in the game that you that requires for you to equip the item that you have to give to the NPC. And this is a bird that needs the magical flute for whatever reason. And if you equip it with your button, you just give it to him with the A button and He's so happy that he gives you this lead bracelet. And the lead bracelet is an item that you have to equip right away. Just in order to not forget it. And now we have to backtrack down the hill, down the mountain. And we will be able to cross a barrier because it, the lead bracelet is made of lead it makes us a little bit heavier than otherwise when we equip it and we can cross this wind barrier this is again this wind mechanic that you already saw in the second world and now we are heading to our next boss fight which is the I'm always no Sometimes I'm referring to him as Golem, but it's actually a, an ogre. So, next fight is the ogre fight. First we have to open this, this door, this gate, and now we have to run all the way back and enter the cave. Do not touch the bones. As you could see, there are bones on the floor. Do not touch them because these bones will close the door. As soon as you touch a bone, it, I think it will make a sound, um, but I do not think that you can hear it on uh, that the game really really presents you with a sound. It just it's just it's just it's just common sense or it's just simple reasoning right now that I think that it makes a sound because the door closes 
So I think when you touch a bone, it's a kind of trap, and you, the ogre knows of your coming, and he will just close the door or something. <clears throat> so the ogre is located somewhere in this cave, and we have to find him. But before we can get to him, we have to solve another little riddle that he um, placed there, or that he installed, which is bullet pushing. This is the most boring part in the whole game. It's a good, I think it's a good uh, section for the nations. <laughs> so I will remember that and call for the nations when I reach this part of the game. So you have to push these boulders around. When you push, when you want to push a boulder, you have to press the A button and you have to hold the A button for as long as you want to push it. You cannot pull the boulders which is important because as soon as you um, as soon as one of these boulders touches a wall you cannot get it off the wall except there is uh, another path or something but you can get stuck in these rooms apparently so this boulder is now it's now you cannot move it anymore you cannot pull it you cannot even use your items in this area. That's also the reason why I'm not running around. Because you cannot use your items, you cannot you cannot use your sword, you cannot use any other items. I think you cannot even... Yeah, you cannot even access the menu. Of course not, I, I'm stupid. Because, well, yeah, I was about to explain this. When you think that you messed up and you cannot proceed in a room, you can press the start button, which normally opens the menu, but in this area, it resets the room. So it kind of calls for Merlin's magic and Merlin, Merlin calls something, uh, does something magical and he resets the room. I don't know how he does this, but for some reason he has enough power to reset a room and everything is positioned like before when you start in a room and yeah this way you cannot really get stuck but you cannot save here so you have to solve all these puzzles to get back to the normal game I think so it's a nice little section but it's it's way too long, so they could have they could have made it a little bit shorter or something. So, <coughs> oh sorry, it's really not that super fun to push these boulders around. Also, let's turn on the music because the boulders make a little sound that is kind of funny when you hear it. No, sorry, that was wrong. It's the wrong button. Yeah, and yeah, pushing them around makes this little sound. If the sound wasn't stuttering around, uh, you could hear it a little bit better. I do not know what happens right now. And music dies again. So, I don't know. Maybe it's just my... Well, actually, my bitrate is kind of enough to stream. I don't know what happens. But anyway, yeah. We have to solve seven rooms of boulder pushing. So, it's seven of those rooms. And then we are <coughs> presented with an item... Yeah, the music tonight is really not on my side. <laughs> I don't know why, but, well, it happens, I guess. Uh, sorry. Nose again. My nose attacked again. So I have to do it this way and every time you solve the puzzle the 
exit appears. And for these rooms, you have to, yeah, well, yeah, just have to memorize the puzzle. It's not that hard. When you, when you have done it once, you actually can remember all the rooms because the first seven rooms are easy to remember. The last ones are a little bit harder. And I said, uh, last ones because in any percent we only do these seven rooms that are required and there are three optional rooms so as soon as i finished all seven rooms merlin is asking me a question or will ask me a question if i want to search for hidden treasure in this area and to find this hidden treasure we have to do three additional rooms and the hidden treasure is actually the hard container of this world that we have to collect for 100%. So in 100% we do all the rooms. Which is quite fun because the second optional room is really hard to remember. For some reason I have I'm having trouble with memorizing the correct layout and solution path to the solution I think I don't know why but you will notice that as soon as you have done this once you will get the idea and it's easier to do it yourself than to memorize it by just watching me doing it or something it's really easy to remember the solutions as soon as you do it them on your own yeah so this room is also quite easy and almost done then we head to the not the last room there are two rooms left I think should be two rooms so that's the second last one and every every one of these rooms is actually pretty straightforward in my opinion and yeah the additional rooms are a little bit harder to remember for some reason or i'm having trouble with it but it's not impossible it's not too hard so as i said it's kind of a boring part especially without music yeah. because with music we could actually hum along or something or do something positive with it but without music we just have to keep going and uh, talking to fill the silence in my yeah i'm just doing that right now I'm trying my best and with that in mind we I forgot something um, we also getting we also receiving something as a reward for solving all these puzzles not just yeah, it's a little, little boring it's just just slightly uh, it's just not the most exciting thing that you can do. And there was a noise. There's a noise outside, I'm sorry. I got distracted. And well, let me think. I have to do this, then I have to do this. Yeah, I'm good to go. Well, there's a noise out there. There's someone not sleeping. That's not good. 
I'm just trying to find out if I have to take an action or if I can just leave it to that. Nope, I don't know. Hmm. I do not hear anything. Okay. I'm sorry. I got a little distracted, but this is kind of muscle memory right now. I just noticed that it's kind of muscle memory because I have done it a lot of times. Um, we are rewarded with an item, not just with a heart container by solving all the puzzles, but also with an item that we need to get to the next boss, the ogre. Um, when we solve all the puzzles, no, that was actually not right, I think. I'm sorry. I forgot one. I forgot that was one. I have to start over. So now you can see that. Yeah, now you could see the power of Merlin to reset a room. Quite nice. Quite impressive. Um. Sorry about that. I was stupid. I was. Um. I just forgot this one boulder over there. There is one more that I need to push. Okay. Um, yeah, we are rewarded with a snorkel actually. So the snorkel helps us to get to the ogre because the ogre's lair is surrounded by water, deep water. And for some reason, Kaylee cannot swim through deep water without a snorkel. Merlin is our savior. He is, indeed. Which is kind of funny because he has enough power to reset a room, but not enough power to solve this stupid puzzle. To save us some boulder pushing. No, we have to do it ourselves. There's no way we could skip that. I'm not quite sure if there is no way, but... Um, I didn't find anything to skip that, so... Well, it's actually even more boring without music. I just noticed that. So, I'm also sorry about that, but that's a problem when you use potato software to stream. You really should use a good computer to stream. I don't have a good computer right now, but I'm working on that, okay? So this is a snorkel you need it, and the snorkel is an item that you need to equip right away because if you forget it, it's kind of embarrassing because you will drown. Also, pro tip, if you talk to Merlin, if you remember, oh yeah, put some music in the background, that's good. That's a, that's a very good idea, because I cannot, I tried, but I cannot provide you with cool music. I could turn on some YouTube playlist or something, but no, I, I actually I do not want to do that, because my bitrate is kind of, I do not want to, no, I do not want to overdo it with my potato software, hardware here, no, not software. Software is quite good, but... Hardware is not. So, yeah, apparently. Um, well, I was about to give you a pro tip. If you talk to Merlin, you will notice that he will ask you a question, but there's no delay. So, if you remember the NPC that sold the shovel to us, there was a slight delay when the text box, the normal text box disappeared and then there was a slight delay and then the text box with the question and the answers appeared and we had to press A for yes. The same is, it's quite the same here in this situation but it's a little bit different as you can see when you talk to him. He will just 
continue talking and when you mash be sure to mash with only one button because he will ask you right away and you have to select an answer immediately without any further delay or something so after my dropping frames is finished I can show you that oh my god the bitrate is kind of low super low wow maybe the neighbor is watching a movie or something I don't know who's using my internet uh, stupid neighbors no they're not stupid of course not Um, I'm getting, I'm getting along with them pretty well. So, if you ask, yeah, he asks you if you want to do the optional, additional rooms, little rooms, puzzle rooms. And if you want not to do that, you have to mesh with B. And if you want to do that in one hundred percent, you have to mesh with A. So A says open the exit and it says continue if you press b it will say i think the exit is over there and it will say exit and this time it's continue because that's what we want we want to have everything so this room <coughs> is pretty straightforward remember you have to push this guy here away that's the first thing that you have to do and then you can no that was wrong sorry okay well now i have to do it this way and then you have to be very careful to place them correctly that's way too many puzzles and the game is also very full of mini games in my opinion it's just mini games it's just games inside games and they are in most RPGs they are optional but in some RPGs they are not like this one so it's required for you to do these little puzzles and stuff and they really I think they overdid it a little bit with they over exaggerated a little bit uh, with the spoiler pushing that is a hard word. I'm sorry for the pronunciation. <laughs> oh my god. It's pretty late in my area actually. Because it's... It's almost midnight. It's almost midnight, wow. Half an hour until midnight, wow. So this is a room I'm having trouble with all the time. Let me try and do um, this. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. That was the correct solution. Did you see that? You have to push... Wow, almost, almost 11 p.m. in your area. Wow. So you're not too far away from my area, I think. Regarding east and west directions. Okay. But you do not have to say where you live, of course not. We do not want to give away our private information, private data anymore. Um, that was the perfect solution to that. As you could see, you have to use one or you have to take one boulder all the way to this side and then you have to go around and because the last boulder you have to push into this center area should be this one. Oh, it's Scotland. Wow, it's Scotland. Oh my god. Oh my god. I love Scotland so much. I really do. I was I was I was doing a road trip. I was doing uh, doing a road trip with my best friend 
last year one week and we traveled through Scotland with our with the with the, with the car that we rent and oh my god that was so amazing the landscape the people everybody was nice to us and my god that was absolutely amazing this trip was amazing yeah it was just amazing so first thing you have to do is or let me think yes i liked it so much i'm not lying i'm not kidding i'm really serious I was so happy to see Scotland with my own eyes because it's so beautiful. It really is. Okay. This room is actually pretty easy. You have to push this thing all the way over there onto the top and then you have to push these three things from the top in this specific order and then you can clear the whole room uh, one after another you just can push all these guys in the middle and you are done back to the game you distracted me a little bit because I really like Scotland so much I want to go back there <laughs> I really want to go back but it's so far away and Flying costs a little bit too much. I cannot afford that at the moment, but I really want to go back to Scotland. I want to go back to Westeros. Westeros was really such a great area. It's such a it's such a great area. We have been at a beach there, and it was so beautiful. Wow! I want to go back. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Also, we collected the, the hot container in this area, and uh, flying is it's not bad for the environment, and it's not very good for your coin purse. Uh. Oh my god. So, we are, wow, at full health. Actually, I was thinking, did I equip the snorkel? Oh my god. I'm glad I did. So... <laughs> If you do not equip the snorkel, you will just drown and you have to start over this room. You are teleported back to the entrance and you lose a heart, which is actually not, it's not, it's not too funny. You do not want to do that. So, yeah. The golem, uh, no, ogre fight. The ogre is the first boss in the game that has a ridiculous, ridiculous amount of HP. As you can see, he has great, great health bar, and as you will see soon, the health bar will not go down that much when I touch or when I hit him. Sometimes it will not even go down one pixel, and you have to hit him twice for the health bar to decrease, and there he is. You have to make sure to run into... Oh, that's too close. That was too close. You run into him with a dart attack to stunlock him and as soon as you manage to stunlock him forever, as you can see, I do not have to adjust it for the recoil. And yeah, I'm just mashing the B button and hope that he will not break free. Sometimes he does, sometimes he's attacking me and as you can see his hitbox when he faces up or down, his hitbox is quite large so I can hit him. But when he faces left or right, his hitbox is quite smaller. That was a perfect golem fight. Just for reference, that was a really perfect golem fight, uh, ogre fight, sorry. And we collected everything. Wow. I'm glad that I did not forget, uh, forget anything. So. <laughs> that, that also happened once, by the way. I was doing a run and. I was forgetting something, so the run was invalidated because I noticed too late. I have to... I want to take a save here. I want to take a save here because 
the upcoming area is one of the hardest and most crucial parts of the game. Yeah. I really slashed away that ogre. Also, the fight itself is pretty boring because it's just mashing B and it happened that um, my thumb started to hurt, but yeah, I could use another finger to mash, but no, I'm always using my thumbs because I'm kind of old school. I'm, yeah, I'm actually, that's just how I am. I'm not sorry about that. <laughs> What am I talking about? Um, we collect this hard refill. This is Garrett. It's the second time. No, it's actually, we are supposed to meet him for the third time in the game. This area with this uh, flute that we, that we dig out, uh, that we dug out and the bird that get, gave us the lead bracelet. In this area, there's also Garrett. I think I said that before and we are not seeing him there but this time we are seeing him but we are not interfering with him or speaking to him or something we have to kill a couple of soldiers in this area and we reach sword level four so this shows me that i killed too many enemies because there are a lot of soldiers left in this area so we have killed too many so uh, too many enemies not too many soldiers, but too many enemies. I think it was just too many bats. So this is the wood golem. This is really a golem, not an ogre. This is a golem. And the wood golem is... I cannot just emphasize enough that this is the most important enemy in the whole game. Because this enemy decides how your end game or... Yeah, how the end game goes. If it will be an easy end game or not, or just a terrible hard one, a ridiculous hard one. If you manage to kill the wood golem, or get around the wood golem, actually you have to kill him, so if you manage to kill the wood golem without getting hit, you will lose one heart per damage or per hit in the next areas until the end. If you are not successful and if you get hit by the wood golem, he's the first enemy to deal two hearts of damage to you and after that all the other enemies in the next area and so on until the end. <coughs> I'm sorry that was unexpected. Um, all the other enemies will deal two hearts of damage to you which is quite annoying so I try to finish a run with this too hard damage thing and it was really really hard so if you manage to avoid that it's just it's just a good thing to avoid yeah so we are killing bushes as you could see there are lots of a lot of bushes that appear in this area and we just slice them down because the wood golem, we tried to trap him inside of this little arena there. The trap is actually uh, something Garrett installed and he gives us also the hint that there is a trap here. We can close this door and the wood golem will just break free and now he um, is vulnerable. I did not show it to you but before you... Um, when there are still bushes around, they kind of give him some strength or power or something. And until they are cut down, the wood golem is really invulnerable. You cannot hurt him. He will not lose any heart, uh, any health. So after that, after we cut down all the bushes, he will be vulnerable. He is, and we can just finish him off. And the way I fight him is the most safe way that I can come up with. It's very important to not get touched by him, as I said, or as I explained before. You will... Also, one mechanic that comes into into play here is... Or it, yeah. Gets in your way, actually, is the store dot attack mechanic. 
You can, as I said before, you can store it auto tag by pressing the direction you want to. Actually, it's, it's, it doesn't matter which direction you press, just the same direction twice and then stop, don't stop moving, and then you can store it auto tag and uh, execute it at your free will. If you have stored a dart attack and want to attack the wood golem, sometimes, no, not sometimes, of course, if you store the dart attack, you will get a dart attack. And the dart attack is really, with the dart attack, it's really hard to hit the wood golem because it's, his hitbox is kind of strange. It kind of overlaps at the top and bottom. No, I, I actually, only at the top, I think. And this overlapping hitbox can hit you if you run into him from the side, so from left or right. And if that happens, you will lose two hearts and the health glitch is activated. And you will lose two hearts. My god. I was expecting to kill him, so it didn't happen. So now we are into the next area, killed all the soldiers that we need, and we can talk to this guy. And he... Oh my god. Did you see that? I didn't do anything else or anything different, but he is willing to teach us the last sword attack. Very nice. Now we can save Camelot. This is this... Uh, this is the lunge attack, by the way. It's this one. Sometimes you will see me executing the lunge attack um, unintentionally because for the lunge attack you have to press a direction and the sword button at the same at the same same frame or at the same time. I don't know if it's the same frame but you know kind of yay <laughs> Yay! We finally did it. We learned the last sword attack. Oh, that was not properly aligned. As you could see, I got hit. But getting hit in this area is, is not too bad, so... Because we can... There are a lot of grass patches in this area, a lot of grass tiles. And uh, these grass tiles allow me to dig for hearts and coins. I. Do not think, are there coins? I'm not quite sure. So we have to get around these plants. Sometimes they cooperate and stop moving. Sometimes they just don't and attack you. So let's equip the shovel and dig out some hearts because we want to have a little bit of health for the upcoming section. Actually, we do not really need that much health for the upcoming section. So we have to collect an orange and an apple in this area because the two-headed dragon would like to fly with us to Camelot. We are now on our way to infiltrate Camelot, finally, and finish off Ruger once and for all. But the two-headed dragon has a problem because he cannot fly. He wants to fly us to Camelot, but he can't. For some reason, because yeah, what am I talking about? You watch the movie, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, the two-headed dragon has, is a little bit of hungry, and because he has two heads, he needs two separate foods, and he needs an apple, and the other one needs an orange. I do not know which one needs which, which fruit exactly, but that's how it goes. So we collected both of those things and oh okay it says the textbook says it okay Devon wants to have an apple and cornwall needs an orange I do not know which one is Devon and which one is cornwall I think the 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 little the smaller one is um Devon and the other one is cornwall but I'm not sure um yeah now we are I try to kill those bats because they are kind of in my way, but... Ah, yeah. This is the flying section, <clears throat> and flying works like you can go very slow, like this, and you can go a little bit faster, like this. By pressing up and down, you can, uh, you can toggle the speed. 
and you do not have to kill all the bats but sometimes they give you hearts which would be great ah that was a heart and oh devil is the tall one ah, thank you <laughs> thank you for that I was oh that was a damage boost that is a professional damage boost that that's the first time that it, this happened okay normally I do not really touch the bats but I was a little bit distracted hearts is always good but you do not really need health at all for the upcoming boss fight also you need to cycle this map four times there are four cycles and you have to fly over this screen or this map four times until finally the boss appears and the boss will be the chimera and the chimera is the easiest boss in video game history as you can see the only thing that you have to do is you have to make sure to follow this pattern oh sometimes you hit him sometimes not you have to mash b for shooting projectiles i didn't explain that but uh, when you follow this pattern when you stick to this pattern you cannot get hurt by him sometimes the chimera starts to um, fly down and hit you but only if you are flying in the same direction as he does if he doesn't you're good to go so make sure to always cross his path and fly in the opposite direction and then that's the most easiest yeah it's the easiest boss fight ever in my opinion oh and i <laughs> i did that's the same mistake that i did before in another run i didn't get a parchment because i forgot to collect um yeah um yeah i'm sorry it's just it's just easy to forget to collect the gem in the last world that was before we talked to devon and cornwall and initiated the flying section there was a gem hidden a little bit a little bit above and slightly to the left where cornwall was uh, devon and cornwall were located so i forgot to do that i'm sorry i really forgot that but i uh, i do not want to do it again so i just continue if you if you don't mind if you want to see the gem i will do it again but i do not think so because it's just a gem we collected so many of them so many of those also it's okay thank you <laughs> i'm really sorry that's not it's not it's not quite a teaching that i wanted to provide but i cannot do anything about that i was distracted by so many things so let's continue thank you just continue okay um this is blade beak yeah you already know that because i do not know if you could recognize him but yeah that's blade beak and Bladebeak has the most terrible AI in video game history, but we will come to that later. Yeah, it happens. I think. I think so. Hopefully, it doesn't happen in the marathon. Oh my god, that would be embarrassing. <laughs> um, but I will. I will practice a lot before that. Before that run, you can count on that. There will be a lot of streaming and a lot of stuff and a lot of practicing. One hundred percent. And a lot of explaining because I need to practice that too. Um, in German, by the way, it will be a German marathon, so I have to explain everything in German, which is kind of a challenge when you are used to explain everything in English. Yeah. Oh yeah, the blade pig is <laughs> also a coworker of mine. Also loved, laughed a lot about this. So yeah. 
He also watched the video of the blade beak AI and yeah, it's just ridiculous. So I have a little workaround for that. Oh, sorry, I touched the microphone. Ah, stupid thing. And um, yeah, before we can do anything in this area, we have to use the grappling hook to go over here and we have to talk to the blade beak. The blade beak, thank you. I hope so. I hope so. Uh, the blade beak will initiate a trigger, or he will, yeah, he will just trigger an event that allows us to get an item that we need. It's this man. He um, wants to get his magical insect back. Actually, he talks about his insect like it's his pet or something. And he wants to, he wants to get it back. It's it's got it got lost uh, somewhere here in this area, and we have to find it. So to find it, we need Blade Beak, as you will see right now. Also, Blade Beak is an NPC that needs to for yeah. You need to equip the item that you give to him before. So this is the magical seeds. Now the blade pick starts moving and we have to take him with us all the way over there. All the way over there. Just killing some mice because killing is good because they are oh my god. And we collect the magical insect which is a very ugly one. Now we got the insect and we could go all the way uh, over to uh, the right and then down but because I found out in a very in a very painful experience that the blade beak is not really able to crush walls downwards or upwards well actually downwards upwards I do not know but downwards is terrible so I'm taking it uh, I, I'm taking him all the way to the left and then down to oh ah, thank you hard give me that come on come on oh let's take the heart because having full health here is very important as you can see uh, in the courtyard there are grass patches which is not the same grass as in all the other areas because you cannot dig in this grass. There's no way. Oh my god, I was I was so sure about that. As soon as I start moving, the mouse comes out. And we have to take this key. It is a key that we need inside the castle. A little bit later in the game. But now we have to go over here and collect this gem. Hey Josh, welcome back. Welcome back to the stream. And you missed something. I forgot the gem bef right before the air shooter section again. I did the same mistake twice now, so I really have to memorize. I have really have to remember to collect this thing. So now we got the magical insect, but um, learning the lunge attack goes uh, or did go pretty well this time. We learned the lunge attack. This time it worked, it just worked for some reason. So that's also an NPC that we have to uh, we have to equip the item for. We give the item to this man, and it turns out it's actually an evil magician that wants to use the insect as an ingredient for a magic potion that turns Rubus army into uh, some kind of Ubu soldiers, if you know this reference. I'm not talking about soldiers that drive around in Uber cars, I'm talking about something else. But doesn't matter. It turns out that he succeeds in making this potion and the potion makes our enemies run around a little bit faster than before. And 
he uh, throws us into prison and takes away our weapons, which is the sword. So we cannot use the sword anymore and that's also the reason why we can run anymore. For this we need to get the sword back and this farmer... Oh no, it's a blacksmith, I'm sorry, I was thinking about a farmer when I was seeing the fork. It's actually a blacksmith and he gives us our sword back and also the key to the castle. <laughs> a very different game indeed. <laughs> That's true. Now it's it's not uber drivers, it's uber soldiers in Grass for Camelot and uber ghosts. Uber soldiers and uber ghosts. So prepare for some very decent action. So as you could see he's running a little bit faster actually a lot faster twice as fast I think and I actually I totally forgot which way to go but I think this is the right way. So this is a key maze now. We have to collect a specific amount of keys and ah goes ah I was too slow. They are really slow. They are... Oh, I can... Because I have sword level 4, I can kill them with one shot, which is nice. In this area, it's uh, easier to use the slingshot for killing enemies, but I can also do that. So, it doesn't matter. We do not need experience anymore, by the way. So, it doesn't matter how many enemies you kill, but you can try to replenish your health by killing enemies of course that's always a good idea now we have to go over here kill the soldiers get a heart back also Kaylee cannot run inside of doorways when there was a door before so in every spot where we unlock the door Kaylee stops running And now we have to go here. Yes, that was, right. that was right. I'm glad that I remembered it correctly. So now we have to get this key. Also, the key that we collected outside in the courtyard is the key that we need for one of those doors inside here. I think it was this door. No, it was, it was not. It was the door in the ghost room, I think. The first door in the ghost room. That is door B, and we need and we collect the door uh, key B for that. So um, the doors have no number, and the keys have numbers. As you can see, it's key number six, and the doors have each key opens a different or a specific door, but the doors do not have numbers, so you have to memorize it by heart. Now we can collect this key and we can collect this way out, yeah, right? That was right. We can collect this one. And now it's only one key left in this area. So this is the thing that you have to memorize. It's just something that you have to remember and learn by heart to to execute this door, this, to do this door maze. What a terrible, terrible word selection. <laughs> to, yeah, to just do this door maze. I'm at full health. This is, this is rare. It's not happening very often. And as you can see, as soon as I hit them, they stop running around so, so fast, which is helpful sometimes especially any percent no in any percent you can also kill uh, uh, each soldier with a dot attack but the ghosts you cannot kill with one dot attack you need two of them and it's hard to get two dot attacks in because sometimes when you run uh, into a ghost into a ghost with a dot attack before you hit the ghost uh, the ghost just does its attack getting bigger and hitting you and yeah it just stops your attack and you get hit so it's really hard to hit them with two dot attacks 
But when they run, they do not execute their attack for some reason, I think. Ah, uh, that is not very... Yeah. As soon as they slow down... No, this is actually a key that I already got. What am I doing? I'm sorry. That was apparently the wrong direction. Hey, Zod level 5. Gotta go. Yeah. I killed so many, uh, so many soldiers. And I will kill a lot of bats again. So I think I can reach Zod level 5. Let's check that. Let's just check. We have a experience. Oh, nah, it's okay. It's 146. 146. I do not know if this is enough. Ah, and we missed the parchment. Ah. ah, sorry. So sorry. Also, there's no heart container in this area. No, that was a lie. There was a heart container in the prison, or actually stables. So I collected that already. So. In the next world, there's no hot container. That was right. So this is the Griffin. The Griffin fight is also pretty straightforward, actually, if you do not mess up completely like I did now. Um, now he is running around and I'm trying to stun lock him, which is a lot easier than it is in the Ogre fight, but for some reason, he is not cooperating right now. Can you please go away from here? What is he doing? Okay, I messed up completely. Right now I want I want him to be in this specific corner right here. That would be nice. Can you where is he? <laughs> what is happening? Hey, come back. So I can fight. Where did he go? Is he gone? No, he's not. There he is. Okay. Come over here. Okay, he slowed down. That's helpful. Because... No, he's not slowing down. Okay. No, I do not want to fight him this way. I want to fight him... Yeah, now we go. Here we go. This is... This is preferable. He's back. Yeah. He was running around and hiding, but I found him and now he's pretty much done for because he cannot break free right now. He's not programmed in a way that he goes too far down, so he cannot break free down there. He cannot break free uh, to the left, there's a wall, and he cannot also break free to the right because there's a skull and here is where I am standing and slashing at him all the time so there's not really many options he was scared about the sword skills because we have lunge attack and solo 4 that's pretty much enough to kill a griffin oh yeah sword skills Just imagine, it's a little girl. It's a little girl that kills a griffin in a room filled with skeletons and skulls and bones. Just imagine that. Okay. We got a parchment. Very nice. I did not forget anything. <laughs> but we will not see the secret ending. I'm so sorry. But well, just watch my PB run and the ending is in there all the cutscenes are skipped but the ending um, is always there because I never skip the ending because you cannot skip the ending by the way so we equip the lab bracelet uh, because Kaylee kind of notices that there is a strong wind in here so strong wind means you need the lab bracelet in order to not be blown away by the wind, of course. All right. You are right, Josh. Absolutely big monster kill. That was a big one. Oh, I've 
Somehow my fingers were not strong or fast enough to hit the sword button. Okay, the mouse is freaking out and killing me. I'm stupid. I got a heart back. No worries. Only three. Oh my god, what am I doing? So this is also a stone puzzle. Let's try it once more for the last time to hear a little bit of noise because I just want to prove that this is the stone as the, the same stones as the yeah they make the same little noise as you can hear and if you do it correctly like this um, the puzzle then the path will open the wall will just disappear and will you will get you can access the next area which is this area where you have to kill all the mice which is the most terrible one of the most terrible things that you can do in this game. Got a lot of hearts, very nice. And now it's time for bats. That's why the split is also called bats, by the way. Can we... Yeah, we are actually somewhere here. Okay. Because bats are really bad in this game. Especially in narrow hallways and narrow caves they behave like well stupid especially this one like you can see it was a little bit frantic and then it you have to wait for the bat to be in a good position to fire up a dart attack come on yeah thank you one more oh that was very close Oh, I've got a heart back. Very nice. Path opens and we are good to go. If you think that jumping in World 3 with our little friend, the Dragon Scale, was enough and hard enough, it was not. This jumping section is really driving you crazy when you do not know how to do it. So, pro tip actually not pro tip, it's actually required to survive this, you have to be aligned a little bit a little bit above this line here to hit the next um, the next platform. If you do it, you land rightly here directly here rightly, directly here and you have to adjust yourself again. Do not walk too do not take too many steps upwards because you will fall down do not take you have to take enough steps upwards to be above the line and then you can hit the next platform it's always the same pattern so you have to be you have to align yourself very carefully that was too that was too low uh, kind of yeah that was close so Every time you are above the line, you're good to go. If you are not, you have to adjust yourself again. Again and again and again. And it works all the time, so it works for all the platforms. And jumping downwards and upwards is... That for jumping downwards is required to be aligned above this line. But uh, horizontally it's not a big deal. You can... Um, yeah, you can you can estimate the jump a little bit better when you are jumping horizontally. The jumping mechanic is the, well one of the. I should make a list, but I think it's uh, number one of the stupid most stupid mechanics in the game. So running mechanic. Is also pretty stupid and poorly implemented because you have to be properly aligned so it's number two and I don't know everything else is number three <laughs> so now I killed all the no there are a couple of more yeah there are a couple of guards left pick two or three of them no it's two of them okay now we killed all the enemies and you have to kill all of them so I'm sorry Josh, no sword level 5. Nah, 
that was sort of level 5. Also, there's no opportunity to respawn any enemies in this area. Because you cannot go back. Sorry, no level 5. Makes me kind of sad, because level 5 would be nice. Because it's the ultimate level. Also, as you could see, just a little fun fact. For sword level 5 you need 900 experience points, but you can get past that. You can get up to 999 experience points, but it doesn't do anything. So there's no sword level 9. For some reason. <laughs> I don't know why. So this is a very stupid boss fight. Stupid because you do not have to mash all the time, which would be nice but boring, but it would be easier. No, in this boss fight you have to focus a lot on what your enemy does and the problem with your enemy is he's moving randomly. So no sword level 5, no. You have to wait for him to crouch. As soon as he does that or as soon as he is about to do that, he is vulnerable. Otherwise he will not lose any of his incredibly high amount of health, which is not high because the bar is pretty long, because it's not, but he will not, sometimes he does not even lose one pixel of his health when I touch him or when I hit him, as you can see. Sometimes he loses one pixel, sometimes he doesn't even lose one pixel, so this was, ah, that was very scary. You have to hit him all the time. I think I explained this fight a little bit better in my PB video, but I do it anyway. So if you, uh, yeah, like this, if you do not hit him, he will start to move a little bit slower, but he will also try to attack you when you are too close to him. And his attack is very, very dangerous because when he jumps at you, his hitbox kind of merges with yours and you will get stuck inside of his hitbox, which is very terrifying and terrible because you cannot break free, because you cannot uh, push him away. So I have to focus right now um, before I can read your message, I'm sorry about that, because I do not want to screw up this fight right now, I'm so close. It's almost done. Almost done. Let me finish off this guy. Yeah. Oh yeah. He cheats. <laughs> Cheating. Yeah, he's invulnerable until he crouches. That's a real world example. It's always the same with people. It's the same with people. When they crouch, they are vulnerable. Otherwise, they are not. Of course. Makes sense. I do not know what uh, this enemy was uh, depicted in a movie. I'm not sure. So. I think it kind of makes sense to make him a little bit of a boss fight that is that requires a little bit of skill or requires a lot of patience to find out the hard way how to kill this guy and that's not that's just the top of the iceberg because this guy here which is Ruber for the last time we have to kill him once more and you actually think okay all the boss fights in the game boss gets a decent amount of HP and an HP meter and you have to you have to do it so that the HP meter reaches zero and then the boss is dead. So let's try that. Let's try that and try to kill this guy by um, making his, his HP down to zero. Also, yeah, you cannot just stun lock him because he has a very high speed, he's faster than you and when he breaks free, so when he uh, starts to run into my direction, he will just hit me and he will break free of the stun lock. So 
Josh already knows this because I'm explaining this all the time because I'm so proud that I found this strategy. <laughs> you have to take some steps back and then you have to approach him again. So, oh, hey, that was very close. I was, I got hit, but he couldn't break free because of this corner. So now you think, oh, I killed him. No, he gets another HP meter. What is happening? And he gets, he gets mad and he also uh, gets a new attack that he shows off right now. He now has, <clears throat> has the spin attack that we also learned. It's actually one of, it's actually our first attack that we learned from the sword master in the first area the, after after killing all the soldiers in the first area. But we never used the sword uh, the, the spin attack in the run. And I uh, recommend to also not use it when you play this game casually because this spin attack is really dangerous because you can just merge yourself into the enemy hitbox and get hit, which is apparently, well, it happens very often when you use the spin attack. It's really hard to use it without getting hit, so I'm not using it. So, this isn't even my final <laughs> I'm, I'm only fighting with 50% of my power. Oh yeah, this is a huge jerk, this guy. So, <laughs> that's great, that's great, so we, um, we now, he now turns into Super Saiyan, um, Super Saiyan 4, and he's not vulnerable anymore, because, well, you can try and touch him and kill him, and try to kill him, but it doesn't work, you can do this forever, and as you can see, the health meter doesn't go down, so what is happening? And I think you will come to a conclusion when you think about it and when you think about what you saw in the movie At the end of the movie, there's something that Ruber does that kills him, which is not this, but which is This <laughs> Right this And he kills himself. Oh, yeah, he's He's DBZ enough uh, off uh, it up, you know he goes really mad, and he... We actually missed some part of the storyline, so the plot was he was kind of melting Excalibur into his arm, or he was trans transforming his arm into Excalibur, or melting with Excalibur, merging it with Excalibur, and... Because he is now connected with Excalibur, he also shares kind of energy with Excalibur and now we do something very 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 smart actually we make him put Excalibur back into the stone which is actually this stone it's the holy something powerful stone that holds Excalibur and he put it back into the stone and that actually kills him because it drowns all the energy from Excalibur into the stone or something like that. I don't know, but it makes sense. So he kills himself and without further ado, Merlin appears at the scene and congratulates and we are done. So this is the run in all of its glory and speed. Well, speed, not really, because we took a lot of time. I forgot to turn on the timer. That would be would have been interesting. The real time would have been interesting. But we get an in-game time, which will also be interesting. Should be something around two and a half hours or something like that. <clears throat> so this is the ending, but not the super secret ending. It's uh, there's a normal ending and a better ending and a super ending, and this is the better ending I think because we collected a couple of parchments, but not all the parchments. So Merlin cannot bring or cannot turn Camelot into its former glory. Yay! We're done. Ah. I 
think for a tutorial there there should there should be a little bit of even more explanation and even more stuff but actually there's not really that much more to talk about when running the game so i think i covered every strategy that i came up with and not only by myself but also with the help of the strategy guide on game faqs and the maps the maps think about the maps mind the maps uh the maps are great and I added some handwritten notes around them and this is my source of rooting this stuff. So as you can see, I did not get all the parchments because I missed one item. Ah, sorry. Sorry. Thanks. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And I really enjoyed doing this. That was fun. Explaining all this stuff and I am apologizing for my stupid throat stuff, but now it's better. Now it feels better. Now I can talk. <laughs> now, when the run is over and I can talk, everything is fine. I hope I do not get sick. Thank you so, thank you, thank you, all of you, so much for this, for your interest in running the game, because I cannot emphasize enough this game is so fun as a speed game. It's, it's, it's really fun to play. Um, despite my sometimes a little bit, I think, sarcastic explanations, but the game is fun to run, to speed run. Yeah. Uh, to play it casually, well, you need a lot, a lot, a lot of patience. And to run it, you just. You just, you just go for strat of the strat, and you just, you just do it, and it works most of the time. It works. Sometimes something stupid happens, but like a mouse catches you or a bat snipes you out of the way. But that's avoidable with a little bit of practice. So I practiced this game, of course, and. It needs a little bit of time to get into a flow with the game a little bit. But you do not have to, you must not push yourself too hard, as I noticed, because I was doing some, the first runs that I stream for the 100% category, I think I was pushing myself a little bit too hard, so I didn't get a PB and I forgot, I forgot this gem, I didn't get the sword tech, the last sword technique, and stuff like that. Yeah, Josh knows what I'm talking about. So, yeah, last stream, I just thought, well, just give it a go. Just turn on the game, just play through it, just stream besides, just talk a little bit about stuff, like explaining a little bit uh, here and there. And it worked so well. Everything worked pretty well, and I didn't take it too seriously. So, I think it was, it was a really nice experience. So, if you are very, if you can play the game or if you can run the game in a very relaxed mood, then you will enjoy it. I can promise you that you will enjoy it if you do not take it too seriously. And I think the one hundred percent. World record is kind of free, so give it a try. <laughs> really, do it. Because it's not well optimized, it's just... It's just the first draft of the route. And it got a little bit optimized here and there, especially the experience route and the experience distribution. Like, where do I have to kill how many soldiers? And... Yeah, with that in mind, just... Give it a go, try to get the world record, or just do it for fun like I do. I just really do it for fun. Because it's a really great speed game, and it's fun to run. Well, what is that?